Yep. Bim -bop. Welcome everyone to the film Vault Dad is Anders. I'm Brad Bishop, your host. For today, we're going to flick fest, confess the flicks we've seen, which include John Wick Chapter 4, Drag Me to Hell, and Sorcerer, the last two assigned by Ryan Regenball. Thank you, Ryan, for being an assigner. Very uh, clever way to get a couple of films in the, uh, in the episode. Well, that was on you. How so? I mean, you didn't have to watch both. I, I was assigned Sorcerer. Yeah, you were. I was. Why'd I was. you watch Drag Me to Hell? How do you know that I did? Because I saw your notes to Avery earlier in the week. My note was, we're going to flick fast Drag Me to Hell. Okay? Mm. I knew that you were for pressing. Okay, all right. All right. I, I know I know how your brain works, so I don't know what that means. So we'll be talking about <laughs> Drag Me to Hell in a little bit later. <laughs> Thank you again, Ryan, for assigning us uh, a couple of films. We also got John Wick Chapter 4, and uh, excited to bring those to you. Yeah. Did you see John Wick? I did. All right. Jean Wick. I need help. I need help. Jean Wick. You're going to get it. I need some help with that one, fellas. So hopefully everyone can help me. Too much to follow? Way too much to follow. I was Complex. Lost. I was plot, very lost. Yeah. I didn't know what was happening. The, uh, the, the I really one, didn't. The actually. nuances. I was exhausted by the end of the movie. We'll talk about that. That makes but sense. I was emotionally exhausted. <laughs> Mentally exhausted from trying to figure out what was going on. Who is this John Wick? <laughs> no, that. We'll, John, why? Well, I, I did have questions. We'll talk about all that. I'm very, you guys both see it? Yes. Oh, I'm yes. excited to talk. Maybe I can get some answers. I also saw, uh, woke up Saturday morning, made myself a coffee, a little breakfast. Yeah. Put on Babylon. Babylon! <laughs> First thing as I woke up. <laughs> I don't know if that's how you started. It was a quite day? a day. And then I drove immediately down to San Diego to buy a car and drove it back. And you yeah, hadn't you were seen that it. upset. It was a 10 hour day. You hadn't seen Babylon? I hadn't seen it. Did you Did you enjoy it? The, the I didn't need the elephant poop with my coffee. No one really needs that, especially uh, early in the morning. That was challenging. Yeah. Uh, really enjoyed the first hour. Mm hmm. And then it started to meander for me. Mm. I really enjoyed certain storylines. I liked Brad Pitt. I liked Margot Robbie. Mm -hmm. Didn't give a shit about the unknown guy who's carrying the movie. Yeah, he was not. He was not the best. Which I, I, they could have found anybody better. They could they have looked, found a name. Apparently, they looked high and wide. They and, looked. And then the black jazz musician was kind of I an afterthought. He was just famous all of a sudden. It is kind of funny that they were trying to make a point about how like he was underused. He back he there. He but maybe that's that's maybe that was the uh, commentary. And, and then look. it was just, hey, he's blackface. He does it once, and then he's like, oh, I'm getting okay. out of here. And then he's done, and then he's just in a club performing. And it was very weird. It was kind of just like, oh, you know, it was black great. people you are doing their own up. thing. You should shut up. It was great. But black <laughs> people were doing their own thing. Yes, now, but it was such an afterthought, which I didn't, maybe is the point. But First of all, as far as I don't want to get on a tangent about that whole entire scene, Please. but that scene really bothered me in the movie. Which because one? first of all, where they showed how he had to put charcoal on, and I know that that happened. That yes. was like a real thing, shoe polish, right? And that happened, and it was, I'm sure, dehumanizing, and, and it was awful for the people that absolutely that it, that it happened to uh, back in the day. But he was already fairly dark skin, so I don't think that that's what I thought was odd. that was distracting. And then also they tried to make it like this, like this really sad, like horrible moment. But all that said, and it is dehumanizing because of the way that they approached it. But back then, especially when you're shooting black and white, like yeah. we had an entire like week or so that we spent on trying to uh, light for. Dark skin, dark tones, and light skin, especially in yeah. black and white film, it's very, very you challenging. And Spielberg, Spielberg I was not a part of that discussion, but it is very challenging. He had already done almost they had time. to they had to do it for technical purposes, which they didn't get into at all in the movie. And I'm sure that the white fucks that were you yeah. know laying down the lawn saying that this is what had to happen, but it, it bothered me a little, that that scene bugged me a little bit. I'm sure there's many, many more racist things they could have leaned into. And yeah, illustrated. I, I think it was just probably the easiest one to do that we all have a reference for. You don't have to do a lot of explaining. We all know when shoe polish is. Yeah, everybody knows blackface wrong. Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, they didn't have him put on like red lipstick or anything. Like, oh, you guys see a trailer for the, uh, yes. the blackening? Yes. Fuck to the yes That's with the blackening. Be great or terrible. The blackening. Oh, I mean, oh. Well, like I saw the blackening. Sizu. You guys see a, see a, see a trailer for the Sizu? Yeah, yes. That yes, yes, yes. Fuck to the yes with the Sizu. Yes, that looks great. There's some good shit coming up, kids. Yeah, uh, exciting. I'm pumped. It's all a red band trailers. Yeah, a lot of red band trailers. Talking a lot of about. gruesome horror. And uh, before my, did you see Russell Crowe? I uh, did. <laughs> the exorcist. Don't need to see no, the exorcist. Yeah, Pope's exorcist. If we get the Pope's uh, exorcist, we're going to have all of the uh, power in the world. From Academy Award winner Russell Crowe. <sighs> we have to do the exorcism. <laughs> like, what is Just good? how we fall. We must do the exorcism. <laughs> Can you fall? <laughs> 
was just it was just recast The Exorcist. Mm. Except for they had a boy telling him to fuck himself instead of a girl. You need to have a little more juice. Do I need I juice? Just, yeah, you're a little bit quiet. You're a little quiet. You're a little, a little far down on the. Uh, Am I? Do I have Brian's level of juice yet? Now, now you're too loud. Am I too juiced? Over, a too, ju- too juiced. Some random knob. And let's uh, let's get into uh, so Babylon uh, three to five for me. I think three out of five. I, I have a hard time sitting with you for the next three hours. Well done. I think parts were very good, and then other parts... Parts that were very good, though. Trump, almost good. everything else that I saw last year, in so many ways, especially as somebody who loves movies yeah. and the history of movies. It brought things to life. I wish the first hour was the whole movie. And the first half hour is just a giant choreographed dancing number, essentially. With a Maybe lot the first of hour. Giant Gatsby party. Oh, well, drugs. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. That's what, that's what it was. All right, hey. hey. Uh, let's... Uh, do I bring this up? No. Am I the only one? It, it, am I being... God, all right. Old man Cowan. You grumble a lot. Old man Cowan moment, mm. all right? I'm just going to... Because I want to bring it to the table. I want to talk to you guys about this and see Let's if it's it. just me. Uh, many, many mornings movies I wake up. Movies are too loud these days. I don't oh like the loud movies. Oh, my God. Save. Save. Save for what? <laughs> for John Wick. <laughs> Very loud. Well, um, I wake up most mornings with Google... Giving me an alert. And yeah. I should probably just go into my settings and just shut down Google. I don't remember giving them access to just give me badges whenever they want or okay. banners and, like, you know, break through my my peaceful phone. Which push, is push notifications. Pushing the, yeah, they're pushing those. But I leave it on regardless, whatever. Sure. I don't care. I'm not sure exactly why they send me this, but this is the third day in a row now that I'm hearing about Gwyneth Paltrow and yeah, how she's, she's offending. Is, now, is everyone getting these notifications? No. No, I don't get those. Like the the one that I got just this morning, I actually took a screen grab. Like this is what my Google notifications is, and it's a horrible picture of poor Gwyneth, who I think takes a beating. Is that Tom Holland? And this is the uh, this is the quote: "I was in Avengers. Gwyneth Paltrow deeply hurt Tom Holland's feelings after she forgot about working with him." Why do I need to know that, Google? Wow, you oh, gotta adjust just, your settings. You weren't deeply hurt by that. And then the, the next story right below it is about how Harry Potter was very very mad at Gary Oldman because he he shook him and screamed at him during filming. Makes sense. You haven't seen it, so you wouldn't know. Isn't this is not what the character called for? Yeah, Sirius Black was old. My child is six years old. He does acting class with me weekly at the uh, uh, where, where we volunteer, and it's it's a great time. And Shake him was, all the time. He was on stage a couple weeks ago, and one of the other assistants was pretending that he was his child, and he shook Atticus. Atticus is six, and he, sh- he was shaking him, and Atticus was going with it. And to the point that the assistant came up to me afterwards and said, hey, I'm sorry if I shook your kid a little too. And it was... It was Pretty hard. That's, uh, that's crossing the line. Atticus understood that it was for acting, and Atticus went with it. Harry Potter had a problem. Yeah, with Gary Oldman still has an issue. The whole harboring, harboring. Is everyone just like, how can I be a victim, but I want to be a victim? Ironic. May I be a victim? <laughs> Ironically, Gwyneth being sued by a victim of her skiing. <laughs> oh, for what? What? Uh, oh, yeah, skiing. Yeah, that's right. She, she ran not, into me, and he can't enjoy wine tastings. I, for one, understand the plight of this wealthy <laughs> white man, and. uh I, if I was on that jury, it might be a different set of story. <laughs> Why can't he enjoy wine he tasting? Would, he would be the 12 angry men. He'd just be. I, I'm the Peter Fonda character. <laughs> yes. Swirling it all around. Just be smirching. As you swirl. You're like, <laughs> I understand this man's plight. Henry Fonda? Yeah. P- yeah Henry. Henry Fonda. Yeah. Why, why can't he enjoy sore wine anymore? I'm not following the trial. I've been subjected to headlines. I am, apparently. I've been <laughs> <laughs> My phone alerted me that uh, to a headline that uh, victim uh, in uh, alleged um, what is Paltrow actually. skiing incident says he can no longer enjoy wine tastings. It is wonderful wow. that she apparently time. hit the, him. Her ninety-eight pound uh, frame knocking into him has relieved him of a sense of smell. Mm. <laughs> oh, taste. <laughs> is, are we sure it's not just COVID? <laughs> he also had COVID. <laughs> Well, how did that go down? Like, how did he even know? If it was a hit and run, how did he find out that it was Gwyneth? Did he, like, crawl down to the bottom and be like, who was it? Did anyone see? I'm imagining if Gwyneth Paltrow was on your slopes, you're going to take note of her at some point. Like, how? Oh, the woman you in the can't pink. tell. On a, have you ever been on a slope? Yeah. Everyone's no, got, I'm like, saying you're down below where you start, you're, you're strapping Oh, because you might have been, like, wearing something identifying, like, hot pink, like you suggested? Yeah, you know, I was just saying, oh, look, that's Gwyneth Paltrow right there in the gold, mm-hmm. uh, whatever. Hope she hits me so I next can sue her. Next thing you know, you're yeah. not enjoying wine anymore. I think if you're in a 20-mile radius of Gwyneth Paltrow, she'll let you know. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. Don't think it's, I don't think it's on the down you level. smell it. All right. Is that all you had to bring up? Uh, that's about it, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm glad we did that. Sounds like you're staying tuned in to the, the entertainment news. I'm, I'm completely locked in, guys. I have, 
I have been from every morning. If you want anything, give me a call. Either one of you guys, give me a call. I'll tell you what the, what Google's telling me the latest. <laughs> That'd be the most elaborate like a uh, news service ever. I have to call you. <laughs> what does Google say today? <laughs> what did they push through your notifications today? I mean, just having the name "push" in there, like they should know that that was a bad, a bad design push, flaw, it, right? Push means. Would pushing. you like to enjoy uh, uh, allow the push notifications? No, you ought to adjust your setting. Get out of here. I don't want your pushy mm-hmm. notification. Uh, I would also like to hear from Drew Piper, who was all the other winner uh, of uh, our yes. Oscar pool. We uh, heard he, he sent cl- us an e- email. So it's a solid topic he came up with, and he claims he had already sent an email, which I uh, disagree. I, uh, I did not get the first one. Mm-hmm. That'll Let come up in your uh, annual review. <laughs> all right. Thank God that's not for another nine months. Why is he laughing? There's nothing funny about what I just said. It's just cold hard facts. <laughs> don't laugh at that. Please don't laugh at that. Please don't laugh at me. Oh, it was me, right? What do you mean? That's what he said. Well, me. Please don't Please laugh don't at me. Laugh at was it dropped? That, that was a, one of your drops. And eventually became one of did, did you use that on the no. Corolla show? Uh, Although, uh, <laughs> no, I never did. Although that was one of my favorite of your drops. I would, I would quote it to you often. You quite did. <laughs> Why would you do that? Why would you find your place, yourself in a place where you could quote that and it would be apt? <laughs> Please don't laugh at me. It was when I was laughing at you, right? <laughs> then you would quote one <laughs> of my drops. Yeah, exactly. It was a very sad caller that called. We had a lot of victims that would call on a love line, and they were true victims. And, and uh, They could have made headlines now. Very often they would become re-victimized while being on our show. And one of the hosts, or maybe the guest, was victimizing this poor... This person was so heavy you could hear it in their voice. Uh, I don't remember, was that what it was called? I don't remember the context of the call. I just remember the tone of the voice. Yeah, well, they, I don't remember exactly what the problem was, but part of it was that they, uh, they were super heavy. And uh, at, at one point... They were it, clowning on him. Somebody was clowning. <laughs> and there's just a long pregnant pause, and then you just hear the poor caller going, Please don't laugh at me. <laughs> And I'm like, that's a great drop. It's very nasally. <laughs> with play, play, play the laugh away. I use that for many years. <laughs> I will save that. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's get into this. I'm afraid to you to move our camera system, so you will not be on camera that this week. Fine. I'm sorry, Avery. I, I would like my, to have I, you on. I forgot my black face, so I, I wouldn't show up on the camera. No, yeah, you would be too dark. Anyway. But, yeah, I have an elaborate system going on right now with the two, with the two cameras. <laughs> They're stacked on one another. It looks like we have Jenga cameras going on. Yeah. Ass tonight. All right. Do you want to hear from Drew Piper or the uh, fan flick? Let's hear them all. I want to hear from the listeners. All right. Let's first hear from the most important listener, the other winner of the Oscar pool. Yeah. From uh, Drew Piper. Piper. Uh, So I believe they only missed one, right? Was it one or two? Uh, They both missed two. Missed two. Both missed two. Uh, This is from Drew Piper. I just finished listening to the Revolties and heard that my last email had not been received, so I'm trying again. I sent an email last Friday, but I'm assuming Brian is too busy with his new Brian and Gina podcast. And That's Avery, true. fuckhead that he is, missed my message. Mm-hmm. I, I got off clean Scott, there. <laughs> Scott Free. Apparently he doesn't believe you're involved in the back end. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I'm giving it another shot. Below is my previous email. Hey, guys. My name is Drew Piper. Hey, bud. And I was one of the two Oscar pool winners. Yeah. In honor of the Oscars and my former days as a projectionist, mm-hmm. I was thinking of top five movie theater scenes. Mm-hmm. Good boy. I had to look and see if we'd done it. Turns out we had not. We had not. Pretty good. I sent him a pair of these, you huh? I don't know what that is. It might make a list. I, I've already got like six or seven in my head. There's some good ones out there, guys. Yeah, for sure. Hey, I'm you excited. see that trailer for Renfield? Yeah, I love I'm not it. feeling it. I like the first one better. Not but, yeah, uh, feeling it. I'm in. I'm in on Renfield. I think we should do a new show where we just talk about trailers. Now I'm, yeah. I'm diving deep. And I'm then, watching them all. And simply say, <laughs> now you turn the corner. Yeah, on I turn the corner. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Even yeah. Oppenheimer. Oh my God, I have watched it. I'm averting my gaze. Are you? Yeah. Eh, what are you going to do? The trailers still are as infuriating as ever now that I'm kind of tuning in a little bit more. Mm. AMC fucked me. How? They fucked me hard. Oh. A couple weeks ago, I showed up 14 minutes in, like after the showtime, you know, the yeah. listed showtime, because that's, that's... Prime time. Yeah. The movie had already started. So now I'm now yeah. I'm scared. I'm scared because they fucked me. Was it like an artsy movie? I missed Nicole or? Kidman doing her thing. I missed it all. Really? Yeah. You should those, get a partial those? refund for so that. now I'm showing up almost on time, and I'm like, what am I going to do? It Stare at my feet. like every time I go to AMC and see a movie, there is minimum 23 20 minutes. minutes. Yeah, minimum 20, oftentimes close to I had it down to a science, so I was like kind of walking in the theater with Nicole. Like, we were both going uh, up the stairs at the same time. Right. I, it was good. I had it, I had it worked out. come to this place. Yeah, we do. Yeah. Stepping in the same puddle. I become enraged. I, sh- I know I should let it go, but I become enraged every at the uh, mainly at the movie choices. Meaning, go to a place we've never been before, and they show Jurassic fucking World. <laughs> we've been there many times. Yeah, and Creed. It's like we've been in both of these places. Well, many Creed times. was the one she's talking about the heroes, right? But the the idea that like we we'll go to a place we've never been, all these films, I've been there. Yeah, yeah. 
La La Land. It's just like <laughs> the Umbrellas of Shoreburg. Isn't that what it's called? Like it's just it's just a blatant like reboot of yeah. that movie. Evidently, it's an amalgamation of probably. A dozen. I shouldn't say because I haven't seen it, but I join in enthusiastically with the clapping. No. It doesn't happen in my theater because I, I, I see movies with uh, humans, not animals. If it does not start in my theater, I have... You start it? You I begin have, the clapping? Uh, oh, you should be ashamed. I led a full theater standing ovation once. <laughs> you did I not. Did, did. Standing ovation. I got the entire theater. To stand up? Some people were. No. Yeah. Did it you was, stand up? People enjoyed it. <laughs> I was not standing, but I was hollering. That's the ultimate callback. People enjoyed it. That uh, over. You, You're not old enough to remember, but... Out here for the longest time at certain theaters, they had, uh, instead of Nicole Kidman, it was calendar ads for LA Times calendar section. That sounds vaguely familiar. And I looked for them. If anyone's listening and you know how to access uh, these interwebs that the kids like to look at, and you can find these videos of the calendar section, and it was, they'd swap them out about every four weeks. They were kind of, they were humorous, right? They were supposed to be humorous, Brian. They were were written to be. (laughs) One of, the one that I remember most (laughs) was... I don't know if they were all supposed to be humorous, but the one that I remember most was there. The, it was on set, and like it was a bunch of crew guys, and they were all fucking with the new kid, the PA, and they were telling him to get like a, a stir or a swizzle or something, right? And the guys like run into all the different apartments. Like this kid, he's like, "Do you have this?" They're, they're looking for it in the camera department. Do you have this? And everyone's like, "No." And then finally he comes back. He's all sweating. He's like, "They, they didn't. I couldn't find it." And that the dude that's fucking with him like holds up just a little like mini straw that he uses to stir his oh, coffee. There, there was no. Twist, it was literally just a swizzle. It was stick. something. I can't remember what he called it, though, right? It was it had oh, okay. a, a lingo. Yeah, like, give me an AD20. Uh, yeah, but it wasn't quite that. And it was, I think it was swizzle or something. I think he did call it a swizzle. And he's like, I'm looking for this kid. And the kid's like, oh. But they, they probably, I do kind of remember those. I, there's probably 20 of them. Yeah, and I, I would watch each one like multiple times each week. And then they'd rotate relish them out. It. And there's no, they're gone. I hate them while they were gone. While I was watching them, now that they're gone, I'm sad. <laughs> I have a really vague recollection of that. Calendar, yeah. LA Times, calendar section. And there used to be just 40 minutes of bullshit before the trailers. They'd do trivia and they'd no. do some well, behind the scenes. Well, that's, that's, the before, that's before the showtime. Anderson yeah. hates Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You had to get there to get your seat because Anderson hates reserved seating, but now you, you couldn't save a seat. You had to show up fucking An hour before. Early. Jesus yeah. Christ. I hate reserved seating because people don't mind sitting next to you and rubbing elbows. That's why I hate it. Really? Yeah, so. I go in trivia. just last night. I went into my theater and somebody was sitting on either side of me. Maybe they're fans. When I bought the ticket, <laughs> no one was sitting on either side. That's how his brain works. <laughs> when I bought the ticket, it, it was an empty theater. It was still mostly empty, but a couple of people said, oh, see that little red seat? I'm going to buy a seat. Yeah. Why would you do that? Are you That's sure odd. it's not because you're in a very good seat or a good row? Oh, it's a good seat. Yeah, good it's row. One <laughs> extra it's still seat one extra row. seat. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. Back in the day, I'd walk in. I'd just find like an empty, empty spot, and that's where I sit early. Right. And then I give looks. Then and people don't judge. sit by me. Now I go in late, and there's people already, so yeah, it's, it's not good. All right. Let's, uh, let's do a little fan Fan fliction. Compiled by the Mitch Burns. Oh, we're going to talk about a movie? Oh, yes. Chris Owen on Facebook. John Wick 4 was fucking great. Hmm. An over-the-head long shot in the third act was so masterfully done, I kind of wanted to cry. Uh, for, for Tagnan on Twitter, John Wick was neither good nor bad. It was stupid. Huh? John Wick 4 has an FVT score of... What do we think? I'm going to guess pretty high. 62. Eight? Oh, I was going to go 80. 84. 84. What? Mm. I the win. people were enjoying. Mm. Eric Chavez on Facebook. Champions was fun and lighthearted. It was. Felt a little long in the tooth, but it surprisingly had a few more genuine, poignant moments than I had expected. I've done that before, too, but long in the tooth means old. Yeah. It's true. Experiencing so many of our characters' personal lives in detail was amazing, and it may have gotten uh, dusty in the cinema a time or two. Hmm. People will inevitably compare this film with The Ringer, so I will say uh, I feel like The Ringer has a few more laughs, but Champions has a more genuine has more genuine moments and a more satisfying conclusion. All right. And SLC Movie Junkie on Twitter, I watched Paint at a pre-screening. Oh. It was hilarious. Mm. Owen Wilson was a perfect Bob Ross-type painter. I particularly loved the 70s music soundtrack. Bob Ross. And finally, Devin Miller, AZ, on Instagram. A good person. Pew was excellent, but the story wasn't great enough for the subject. Let's see. Uh, the new Pew movie that I don't think I need to see. Did neither one of you Florence saw her? Pew. The one from last year? Was in Ireland or Dublin Lord or Darling? something where there's some miracle oh. and people were starving or something? Yeah, I missed a few of hers. Was it good? Dig. I don't see, yeah, all, I don't see all Pew. 
I, I should the, see all pew. Yeah, I thought oh. you were the pew master. I am the pew. I, I like the pew. However, she was the weakest part of. Uh, oh, I shouldn't say that. I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop you, before are, I alienate the pew. Are you such an enthusiast that you would start a group called Pew and I? <laughs> Why would you laugh at that? <laughs> it was terrible. Why, why would because you do that? It was so perfect. You encouraged it was so, so now he's going to do it again next time something like that happens in his brain. He'll actually say it again. Well, I will. Because it was so impressively <laughs> stupid. I will. I don't think he could have said a worse thing, which is why it was funny. Well, I'll, I'll say it again. Here's what's sad is that it will probably exist at some point or another if she continues to rise. Yeah, because like the Beyonce's fans are like the beehives, yeah. right? Like the Pew fans. Why were you saying all that shit about Beyonce before the show? I don't think I had a thought about Beyonce. You were. You were he was inspired by the shit. blackface talk. Talking a lot of shit about really? her. About how you I, felt like she wow. she doesn't deserve It her. must have been a blackout moment, because mm. no pun intended, because I don't remember that at all. She was the poor man's Madonna. I felt that was a little racial. Yeah, oh, I do remember thinking that. Did I say that? Oh, jeez. <laughs> I feel stupid. I'm just letting the beehive know where to aim <laughs> their stingers. They got a lot of crossover <laughs> with Beyonce fans. Hey. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> I wonder. Yeah, I hugged her once, so I wonder if that uh, get, would get me any credit with that with that group. Uh, yeah, I gave her oh, a, yeah, because they came in a, a love genuine line. hug. Yeah, and it was right. uh, it was like a, a moment. We shared a moment. I think there'd be people to pay to hug you just because you yeah. hugged her. I haven't watched since. That could be the new uh, talks with chats with Andy. It's just hugs with Andy. <laughs> hugs with Andy. <laughs> hugs with Andy. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Bring it in. <laughs> You I mean, remember like, the story? It was it's a great fucking story. I haven't told it in a long time, but like she had me playing a song for Destiny's Child. That's how long it was when there were still four of them. That's mm. how long Ooh, ago it was. Oh wow, early. And uh, I screened it like I always did in the early years. I ended up just not screening songs after a while. Like if there's gonna be cuss words, I'll cut them out in real time. I'm not listening to this fucking song <laughs> before it airs. Three minutes, no That's, way. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I would listen <laughs> to them all the way through. And uh, I was listening to this one, and it clearly said uh, something about someone's cock being full grown, and. <laughs> Going to play it, right? So I had to go in there during the break, first break. I'm like, hi, yes. Um, hey, sorry to let you know. They're like ladies, 50. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> just listen to this song. And it's uh, it clearly got some uh, some racy language, uh, including, but not limited to, uh, cock, cock being full growing. And Beyonce was fucking mortified. She's like, <gasps> she's like really religious. It does not. <laughs> and 14. <laughs> She wasn't 14. They were like 20, 20 something. Uh, She's like, oh, I'm so sorry that that's the way you heard it. No, no, it's his pocket is full grown. And I'm like, oh, oh. my mistake. I apologize. I feel full. We had to go laugh about it. And then later I went in again. It still and I sounds said, like a euphemism for a bar. Still sounds like that, but At it's fine. At least I can get away with it. I'll play it. And she was laughing. And she goes, I'm going to tell you something on the way out. She came and gave me a big hug and said, I'm so sorry that you thought that. And I was like, no, it's fine. And she goes, what's funny is every time we perform that song now, I'm going to well, think that in my head. head that it's saying that it sounds like a cock Do you think she still grown. does? I don't think she performs that song anymore. I think she's moved on to... I bet I bet they still... I How much... She was so fucking material. sweet, though. She was like one of the few... And I say this, honestly, like one of the few people that came in there where I'm like, that person deserves to be, you know, <clears throat> successful. Sure. A lot of people, I'm like, why is this person successful? Get him out of here. It's Graham. Was that where we were? I wasn't anything. I was yeah, saying, you asked. Oh, uh, the one thing uh, that this should be for off air, but I'm I'm half dumb and half have brain tumor. I thought Danny Leffler assigned us a film. Is that for next week? Uh, that was la- last week. It was last week. Oh, Brian, Brian. It really is the brain tumor. It was Ginger back. Snaps. Oh, that was Danny. You're right. Talk is not full grown. Your you're pockets empty. <laughs> pockets <laughs> pocket empty. empty. All right. Empty pockets. Cut that out. That let's very embarrassing let's get into the. Uh, it's very embarrassing. The movie of the week, Jonathan. Vic. All right. Who starts? John Wick 4 is a 2023 film. John Wick 4 is what he just John said. John Wick Chapter 4. Sorry, I should, I should fix, fix that. It's like a novel. Uh, it's directed by Chad Stahelski. Mm. Stahelski? Stahelski? Stahelski. Uh, he, is, uh, he has directed three films. John Wick. John Wick 2. Mm-hmm. John Wick 3. Yes. And now uh, John Wick Chapter 4. Is that what this is called? Yeah. yeah. Mm. Uh, starring Keanu Reeves as the... <laughs> Do your little joke, Brian. Ep- eponymous John Wick, mm-hmm. Donnie Yen, uh, Bill Skarsgård, Edith McShane. <laughs> He's so angry. Uh, Shamir Anderson, uh, Lawrence Fishburne, Clancy Brown, and Lance Reddick. R.I.P. Lance Reddick. Mm-hmm. Yes. Is this the last role? Do we know this for sure? I well, I assume mean, it's one of them. Uh, yeah, I would. I would imagine you could easily click on his name on IMDb and see if anything is coming up for not. him, Brian. That would that make would, him. That would imply he does work for the show, though. 
Oh, yeah, it would make him fuck, doing something. Yeah, he's doing kind of like behind the scenes. You almost stuff. got me there. You almost, <laughs> <got> <laughs> almost had you do you something. Almost had him produce. Uh, yeah. Go ahead, Brian. More. That's all there is. 95% of Rotten Tomatoes. This is in theaters now. Uh, it's a very long film, two hours and 49 minutes. Israel. However, for me, never once dragged. Really? Yeah. I was in the whole time. All right, guys. I was swept away. No this dragage. Un- I was not dragged. This is the franchise. I was carried. That answers the question. What if all hitmen were part of the, the Illuminati, right? <laughs> Essentially, that's what it's, <laughs> it's going after, I think. Do you remember? And you probably don't, but I do. The because it has nothing to do with you. The first, um, the first John Wick movie when we talked about it uh, years ago, whenever it was, I was like, I enjoyed it. Great fights, great whatever. La la la. I'm gonna use a lot more of this uh, underworld, this hotel, mm-hmm. and blah blah. Mm-hmm. This is a lot more of the underworld. This mm-hmm. is all the underworld. Yes. And was three was that way too. Three was that they really kind of evolved towards. And I'm, I got my wish. Do we yeah. know how many more chapters are they planning on? Uh, I read on Wikipedia that they had shot. Chapter five, along with chapter mm. four, did they? I thought there yeah. was no confirmation that they were well, doing like anything further. They put them both in the same movie, and we just watched it. Oh, that was it. it was Kill Bill Volume One possible. Too. Yes, oh. quite possible. I had a really hard time with this one, guys, and really? I know that I'm kind of in the minority here. And I and I do want to. I don't think I'm gonna like see the errors of my ways and like see the light and like love this movie. And I know I'm not doing myself any favor because I know uh, favors. Because I know a lot of people are listening. They absolutely love this movie. Mm-hmm. They don't need to hear some guy come in and just you know say that, it, that he didn't like it. Which is what it's about to happen here. Oh, no, no. Uh, I love Donnie Yen as Kane. He was great. He's great. Uh, it makes me want to go back and watch the rest of the Ip Men because that's what he's, he's, he's he is Ip sure. Man and the Ip Man. And I've, I've seen two of them, I think, but I don't know if he does a whole lot of this stuff. He, he's fucking rat. He, he reminds he me of Nicolas Cage a little bit. He's got a little Nicolas Cage vibe yeah. to him. Yeah. His hair and his face, the way his face was shaped, he was very, he looked a little cagey to me. And with too. the sunglasses. Yeah. Now, it, was it? He also had a well time fuck off. Earlier, it was, was fuck great. off. Was it told earlier in the one Very of the chapters, handy. like his character and the blindness no. and all? No, that he's stuff? new character. No, he's brand new. Why? Is, so maybe we'll find out later. Or it doesn't matter. He just is. We're he supposed to is. just be cool. Think you know like the sixth sense going on with him. I guess like it's just I, I, it's a very similar character to Rogue One. Yes. I love Scott Atkins uh, as the final level boss, the Russian card dealer guy. That was great. I mean, that was obviously yes. video game. Just this movie. Oh sure, sure, is sure. So sure. steeped in video game. The firecracker shotgun uh, overhead. Stuff tremendous was, that, tre- was that stuff woke me up i was so i was trying to I, I was doing that thing and i was thinking of you a lot brian where like exactly. i don't i can't just acquiesce mm-hmm. and relax and let myself enjoy something that's so really actually, a, that's really a character flaw it is so i i'm, I'm trying i'm working on it so i fully reclined the seat which look i never you, look at i reclined you. it all the way back yeah and i was like almost like floating it's almost like zero gravity a little bit right that's and i'm great. laying there watching it that's how i enjoyed it too. and then i felt myself starting to drift oh, off no, a little bit i was starting no, to fall asleep no, 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 yeah. really i was and then in this movie, and then the, and then the uh, the overhead really really inspired ambitious. That's two hours and fifteen minutes. Into the I know. Movie. Oh, that's where I was starting to fall asleep. I love if you, that. If you've seen so satisfying about all was, those gunshots, it was just, fantastic. Apparently, that is lifted from a video game. That shot. This, well, if you've seen Minority Report, it's similar to that. Remember when the the spiders go into the well, that was the more electricity, complex? wasn't it? What that was more electricity, wasn't it? What you oh, mean? you're talking about over. I'm talking the about the overhead. Yeah, shot. I've seen that in yeah. a, a number of different yeah. things, with the, where they take off the roof and they actually build the set out. So it's well, just the wall. action, but the actual gun that right. was just there's a fire there's gun. Something so satisfying about the crackling and the popping because I was I had such death fatigue. You know, it felt like felt like Contra. Remember the little game? You're probably too young for Contra. It sounds familiar. Yeah, it's probably like played in the arcade. Yeah. I mean, it's it's you got the steampunk, the video game, the '80s action throwbacks, and all the ridiculousness that just my brain is like, why am I supposed to accept that? And I can't just let go. Like, how? Let go. This. Like, him just holding up his hand with his Kevlar sleeve and never getting shot in the hand. Ever. Like, well, he's obviously got his hand inside. Uh, him. No, he didn't. It's just... It, <laughs> I just got so tired of watching everyone get shot and everyone taking turns and not just all getting on him at the same time. Like, RRR, everyone gets on the fucking guy at the same time. He still prevails. Like, they figured that out. They worked that out? Well, they did that in the Matrix number two, where they would have been... Re- re- there was definitely shades of Matrix in here, especially oh, with yeah. dancing. With the dancing. Oh, for sure. Everyone's oh, just dancing rave. along. Yeah, yeah. The, the, those people seem nonplussed. Until they, the w- until they were. <laughs> Another <laughs> until they question. Were very plussed. Another thing that had me going, like, why? Why is this no one nonplussed? Well, they're Germans. Who knows? I was so exhausted. Also, my mind was drifting and thinking, like, is there any other action that... Okay, let's say the death is the action, right? The death killing is someone, the action. killing okay. someone. Is there anything else in movies or TV that can happen as 
much in a scene is can anyone do any one thing that many times it's such just, as killing such as well, killing or being killed like is there any other like action dribbling a basketball i guess so you mean like something dramatic like of consequence of consequence yeah, yeah. or any any it's just like yeah, that's the can't. only thing that you can see over and over and over and over and over again in the scene yeah i don't think you can yeah no, we can't do a fast forward to uh the, the end of this episode we can't do that many births no you can't no. well have you seen men actually i guess you could <laughs> <laughs> I take it back. I don't know. I know that this movie, obviously, there's a market for it. And people are, are yeah, slurping it up. It's my but fucking I eyes. I was so tired. Oh, I loved it so much. It was so much fun. I can't believe you didn't yeah, like it. I, I was l- laughing like a child in a theater. Yeah, yeah I, I laughed it, a few it, times for sure. It, it, I, I got the giggles. And, stuff, right? <clears throat> and then it? they had an opportunity for a really satisfying moment at the end, I think. And it was just mistimed for me. Anyway. Really? I thought it was very satisfying. It happened too quick. Way too quick. There needed to be more realization. It happened like, mm. I'm like, I felt cheated. I'm like two well, hours, 45 minutes, and that's what I get. I feel like it been drawn out would have been a little too much. Yeah, too I thought much. I wanted at I least think, a I think two, the audience would have caught up. I wanted at least a two beat of realization mm. without saying anything else. But I think if you waited any longer, they would have tipped the hand of the audience. Well, we knew what was going to happen. I guess that that's what it was. They wanted to surprise the audience with it as well. Uh, who would have been, mm, who was surprised by that? It was very obvious what happened. Right? I mean, are we doing a spoiler? I don't think... No, I, I'm, I've just upset a bunch of people. Guys, and I get it. I wish I could like it. And I and it's not like I'm... I'm I'm about to talk about a movie next week about that just went over my head. I'm not that bright. I just don't respond. Also, I think you're just done with guns and killing, though. I've been done with. I can't believe that we're not done with that, especially with. But this is such an inventive way to do it. Every kill is different. Is it? It's not though. I don't even know who he's killing. The fucking dudes that came in with the masks, like the the uh, what are those? Uh, The the like the the, shogun killers, right? Who who are they? Like, are they bad guys? Are they good guys? Are they are they hired men? Like, he's just killing all these people. I have no... F- and he... Sh- for that scene in particular, that just went on and on and on. It was just a bunch of headshots with a bunch of CGI with it's little true. pink mist coming out of the heads. It's well, like, they have Kevlar too, so gotta go for the head. It was just over and over and over. And like him... And then he... Obviously, he worked really hard. And I... Keanu Reeves is great. I will love his performance. And like, I guess if you can call it that. There's a lot of laugh out loud moments. Great guy, love seeing him doing so well. Everyone loves him. He's the nicest guy in Hollywood, apparently. But he, you know, he he's in shape. And he had that one takedown move, which I probably saw ten times. So sure. Hey, go with the works. And it was funny watching him fall downstairs. I guess that first, was very funny. The first few flights, and then it. No, it's just the fact that he. I don't know it's a spoiler to say purposely he, not have any blood on him. Was that like a joke, or it's like what am I? Spo- I don't. Yeah, blood. I, I just with all the fucking, and I don't want to get political, but with all the, oh my god, it's just I. It's what's weird with all the goddamn, all the insanity that happens with guns in this fucking country. And then like we're fetishizing what, what happened, them. We're fetishizing them in this, in, in all these movies still that people are just like, when he gets the one gun and Larry Fishburne is telling him like how sexy it is. Like, I'm sure that some people are getting boners with that. And it's just weird. It's weird. I don't know. I didn't, I didn't feel like that was inappropriate. It's, it, I feel like I'm in crazy town sometimes. Like these are still the movies that we're uh, going after. But this it's, is it. it, like Avery said, and I don't agree with you totally, Avery. But it is a fun new way to sort of do this uh, this gun fetishization. You know, I don't, I don't know that I don't know that I would agree that everything is new and original because I Anderson, don't think so right, either. But I think he's the popping guys the head over and over again. But I think they manage the the way they do the choreography though is they manage to make what there's probably 400 deaths. A lot of them feel relatively unique or different. From just the way he will kill somebody with the nunchucks. Kills like 20 people a was, different way with that, was, that weapon. That was Stuff like one that. One by one by one. The sure. guy with the axe is just like his pose. You can but see I, him behind him waiting for his turn, think for his cue. But I think that's what was clever was to introduce the Kevlar suits. So then you have it. You have a plausible deniability why they're able to move like they do. Mm-hmm. Why they don't die immediately from a gun. And it. Add some interest so he gets to, to the shoot choreography. Each one like three or four times. Yeah, and it's different, and you can do the shots, and they can block them, and it's almost more—I don't know—like a kung fu based gunfighting. I think I just can't access it. I can't appreciate. I think like, you just really don't care, stunts. which I get. And it was like somebody who doesn't like porn. I know how hard it is. It, it's crazy. I, I I can understand just how much how ambitious a lot oh of my these. God. The stunt work is magnificent. Yeah. Speaking of which, I had this thought, and, and maybe it's a dumb guy thought, but I, I'm watching the movie. Most of my thoughts are dumb guy thoughts. How are these movies 
never been nominated for an Oscar for, oh set, des- for set design. The set this design is magnificent. This, this one was pretty good. It, well, it, well, it was. I kept. I know a lot of them are pre-existing historical landmarks or whatever over in Europe, but there were plenty of times where I was like, "Wow, this is amazing." It didn't have to look this good. It really did have that spectacle to it. It was like it was yeah. like a good Michael Bay movie at times, almost mm. the way that it was shot and just big. It's just saying Michael. Bay. And there was really world building. You could feel it in this one, where it was just all the different factions, and it felt. But each world was just like I. I, I can't I can't take the fucking leap. I want to, guys. That sucks. That's I want to take that, the leap. That's on you. I'm trying though. I recline my seat. <laughs> I'm trying. I really am trying. I, I leaned mean, over. I, I went with my could. sister. I went over. I went with my sister. I leaned in. I'm like, hey, we could bail if you want. I felt bad. And she's like, no. She was into it. Yeah, she, she liked was, it. Really Do you know who movie. took the leap? Who watching John Wick? It's a. Uh, Turned up Max. This might be the loudest movie I've ever heard. Uh huh. When it just it's starts off, loud. he's just punching the wooden board. And it's the loudest thing it's I've like ever heard. It's like a thunderclap. Fwa! Fwa! And Lawrence Fishburne's reciting some poetry. Fwa! And then I just hear in the, the background of the shot, I, 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 you hear just the, this faint noise of a baby. I'm like, <laughs> Inter- I'm interesting. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, interesting. So it's just, fwa! Fwa! I'm like, okay, cool. And then I, I'm waiting for the reveal, and then Lawrence Fishburne comes out, and he goes, all right, are you ready to kill so-and-so? He hands him a gun. Smash cut to the next scene. They're riding horses, and I go, why do I still hear the baby? I thought that was part of the scene. <laughs> no, this woman brought a baby yeah, wow. into John Wick and, and kept it leave? the entire time. What city is this? This was in the Grove. Ooh. And the woman was pregnant People are with another baby. The worst. People are the Hey, speaking of pregnant, we're going to be doing top five birth scenes later this week. Top right. five so it's birth topical. scenes later this week. And the baby wow, stayed the brutal. entire time, and it was the movie was so loud you could not hear the baby crying. Wow. At times, there were a couple. And then quiet you get moments. quiet, and then you hear one cry from the baby. You go, <laughs> one yelp. What is for help? Who takes a baby into John Wick? Skarsgård was great. Uh, Skarsgård was great. Incredibly uh, uh, self-centered. Uh, Self-aware, person like he knew what kind of movie he was. No, I'm, I'm talking about the baby. baby. How's mom oh. doing? it? <laughs> We're talking about and Skarsgård knew what movie he was. Yes. I do. Don't you get the sense? And I don't want to like shit all over uh, Keanu. I love Keanu, but I get the sense he doesn't know what movie he's in. Oh, I disagree. Okay, I yeah. will give you that. It, do, it seems like it he seems thinks like, he's making a serious movie at times. I don't know. It does seem to me like everyone in this movie outacts him. Yes, but and like Ian, McShane, like when he shares a scene with Ian McShane, it feels like they're. <laughs> it, it lines up, it, but it feels much more like Keanu's occupying almost like a. A B movie, yeah. Whereas McShane is going, no, this is this is we're like going for it. I'm top acting tier my balls ridiculous. Off. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Act- well, two things. Number one, no, everyone out acts Keanu Reeves. That's not his strength. Acting, his strength is yes. being a movie star. Number two, I you're think right. That, you're absolutely right about yeah. that. I, I think I, I think for Keanu, it works for him Don't to like be that. so serious. Otherwise, the whole movie falls apart. In the same way, it does everyone with him in the Matrix. Can be this weird caricature. Yes. From Ian McShane to Skarsgård. He's everyone. a caricature though of. Himself, yes, he kind of yeah, is, yeah. In a sense, I agree. He's kind of like a like a if Neo was a meme <laughs> in a certain way. I, I loved it. I really enjoyed it. I know most people are. You didn't like the Warriors homage? Did you hate it? Which one? The Warriors homage. No, I didn't like bring that up. It's like forty minutes. Yeah, that bothered me actually because don't don't you take my Warriors and try oh, and now make it, it part wonderful. of your fucking thing. Wasn't that in the last one? I remember. That. I remember Radio I don't remember. Element. Only thing I remember in Wick Three is in. Uh, I, I got the one dogs, last thing. The dog fight in Wick Three with a uh, Halle Berry and the that. German Shepherd. Was I great. remember the horse, and I'm like, is this going to happen? Is he going to utilize the horse in the way that I want him to? And he did, and I was so excited and so happy. Let's talk a little bit about the black character in this one, and I and I don't want to talk about it too much without giving things away but did that feel shoehorned into anyone else kind of like babylon no not like babylon <laughs> was that character i mean that character didn't really serve much of a purpose at all other than just be there he was a fine character he was okay but like right up till the end like what what there was was that i don't know I, he was forced definitely the weakest part for me i still enjoyed what he was doing it wasn't a a a negative, but I kept it was waiting for him to actually have something to do with the story, me. and he really didn't. And he well, the, he kind of did, but then it never no, I, really uh, fully paid I, off. I think he was. I, I is it set up I, for I, I think five. What you're, what you're saying, and I agree with what I'm saying. What you're saying is he was only a device of the plot. Like yes. he was there just to jack up the price and get more people, or to stop certain fights from proceeding too far, yeah, yeah, where he, a main was, character was, would get uh, killed. He was a complete plot device. He, I didn't feel like there was anything about his character that was interesting. And the dog, the dog was fun, but it wasn't eh. as fun as it yeah. thought it was. And also, he wasn't fun enough to make the dog extra fun. 
Yeah. There was something he wasn't he was seen miscast. Like I could see like really liking that guy in something, just not like the badass who's kind of on the fence that he yeah, ended up I, trying to supposed yeah, to be. Yeah, he almost should have been funnier he or just some more soft. charisma. Yeah. You know? He seemed like he kind of didn't know what he was doing. That not the actor, been, but that, the character. That should have been an old, grizzled, like, yeah. hitman. Yeah, you know who's I mean? seen a lot. He's jaded, yeah, yeah. but... Okay, I went back and looked at my vaulties from the last couple of years, oh. and there's only one out of those 20 movies that were my favorite movies of the last two years that uh, is uh, a remake. And that was uh, All Quiet on the Western Front, right? Okay. Which is just from the same source material. Very, very different movie from okay. the John Wayne movie. John Wayne, right? John whatever, Wick? whatever fucking John Wayne. Oh. Oh, John, John All Wick. Quiet on the Western Front. I, the original, I, which I saw. It wasn't John Wayne. Was it John Wayne? I don't even remember. I saw it a long, long time ago, and it didn't. Whatever. It's the only movie that I saw I, that, I, that was on my top 10 list over the last two years that okay. is any kind of remake. Is it okay? Do you think it's okay, guys? Let's hear this. If I, if I could ban every reboot, remake, prequel, and sequel for the rest of the year, do you think I can do that? No. Every no, franchise. I, but can you imagine the good movies that I'll see that I won't see because I'm watching this drivel? The, the show, you'd be hurting the show. But you could tell me about what I'm missing. That is true. I mean, you can try. You're gonna miss I'm it. part of the fucking. I'm a very small hey, part of the problem. I got, right? I got two words. I'm a very it. small part of the problem. I got two words that's gonna ruin this all for you. Spider Verse. <laughs> <laughs> got him. They fucking got me. I got you. <laughs> all right. Well, you know, maybe I can give myself. Maybe, maybe I can. Oh, Ooh, maybe just top cheat five. Day. I top five. five. Top five. I'll top allow five myself reboots. five. Five cheat days. They're not even cheat days because I don't want to, except for Spider Verse. Uh, are you going to pre count John Wick? Is that going to be front loaded? No, no. This is the, the catalyst. This is the catalyst. Okay. Which I'm sitting there watching so going this going forward. I knew what I was getting into. I knew what I should. I should just leave this to people that like it. They're like, and well, it's like yeah. you guys. Oh, Why yeah, am I like, here talking about it when I knew that I probably want to like well, it? It's like when you have a food that you know you don't like and you try it again with friends anyway, where you're like, I don't want to eat at that restaurant. Yeah. I'm trying to or it's like if I'm up on my pulpit always talking about, you know, like cholesterol and stuff, and I'm like, man, I gotta try this new McDonald's cheeseburger just to let everyone know if it's good or not, but they shouldn't be eating it because it's bad. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Now I'm making it sound like people but, shouldn't be watching John Wick. But you got to see the overhead uh John Wick is fire shot. It was great. Was it worth two hours and forty five minutes? Yes. To get there. Yes. 100%. Donnie Yen was fucking great. He was. There's and I like the scars guard. I like the scars. There's a lot to it. It sounds like I love this movie. Oh my I, god. Oh, I love this movie. There's two hours and forty five minutes, and I like maybe thirty minutes of it. Mm. The rest of it, it was just like okay. All right. All right. All right. I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop. Glad you guys liked it. I wish I could. It's very good. It was quite fun. The baby Very enjoyed good. it more than you did. I think. It didn't sound like it. It sounded like a lot of crying. The baby was quiet more than you would have thought, though. Let's take a quick little break here. Why? Because uh, we're going <laughs> to take a break here, brother. All right. Break down, my guess. So we can go watch John Wick again. All right. I'm in. Be back and we watch John Wick. We'll be back in two hours and 49 minutes. I'm <laughs> trying to sleep. Welcome back. Happy hunting. <laughs> She's telling people to hunt. I don't think that was supposed to be a laugh out. Well, people were laughing at my face. How many people do you think, what percentage of people in each theater caught that was a Warriors reference? What percent of the audience do you think? Oh. I mean, just the older audience, right? Like 10% maybe? You think 10%? Yeah. There were some old guys. Under. I feel like most people, yeah, did not hmm. catch that at all. Hmm. I get it. I, I, I'm sure there's a lot of other references to other like throwback like action movies that I didn't pick up on. But okay, let's talk other movies. Ryan uh, Regenball, a devoted listener, Ryan Regenball, uh, uh, signed up for the assigner level. Uh, if you want to be an assigner, if you want to sign us a film, that's just six months at twenty five dollars. Mm -hmm. Yeah, over on our Patreon, patreoncom slash vault. Ryan assigned us a uh, film. Assi he assigned a film mm -hmm. that uh, that I saw. He did. Drag Me to Hell. Drag Me to Hell. Drag Me to Hell is a 2009 film directed by Sam Raimi, starring Allison Lohman, Justin Long, Dilip Rao, uh, David Paymer, Lorna Raver as Mrs. Ganesh. Yeah. Mrs. Ganesh. 
Uh, 92% of Rotten Tomatoes. This can be streamed on Prime Video. Uh, Anderson, I was instructed uh, if I was to watch this movie that I should watch the unrated version. Yeah. I might upset you by letting you know that I saw the original theatrical release. I don't know why you would do that. I'm going to tell you right now why I did that. Um, number one, this has been a movie that I just have not got around to seeing, but I've wanted to see for a long time. Mm-hmm. Uh, I miss Alison Lohman. Mm-hmm. I thought she was a, a very engaging screen presence, and it was mm-hmm. nice to see her on the screen again. Yes. Uh, even though it was from you know 11 years ago, 14 years ago, Agreed. whatever it was. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, more than anything, this movie has come up so many times in interaction with listeners and just browsing on social media people talk about drag me to hell and i've seen uh, quoted as the scariest pg-13 movie you're Mm. ever gonna see and i was like i'm like marketing brian it's fucking marketing no this is people who've seen the film i'm not talking about but he likes the market (laughs) i'm not talking about the ads but i'm about people who've seen it like this is the scariest pg-13 movie you've ever seen and i'm like I want to see the version that everyone's seen. I want to see what's so special about this version. I want to see if it is, in fact, the scariest PG-13 movie ever seen. Because you're an authority, because you've seen so many no, scary PG-13 no, movies. I can't, I can't yeah. weigh in and say that I can tell you. But I will tell you for a fact, mm. it is very scary for a PG-13 movie. <laughs> Great. I'm so glad that the... Uh, it was worth it for that. Glad insight. that the experiment yielded yeah. some results. <laughs> So Fantastic. I don't know, you have to tell me about the version you saw. I don't know if there's a lot more blood. So in, the ver- to, in the version that I saw, there was a lot of bodily fluid right. being expelled into mouths. It was, it was very gross. Ball. There was that, yeah. I'm surprised that that made the uh, the unrated version. It was, it was the substance green? Yeah. Yes, it was. It was a various color, but green predominantly. <clears throat> Quick little uh, story backdrop, uh, if you don't know Drag Me to Hell. Well, actually, I think this kind of sums it up better than the actual plot, for better or for worse. This is... Sam Raimi at top Sam Raimi. And I'm really disappointed it's that it a, took me this long to have seen it. I it's spent a over a decade Sam Raimi movie. not seeing this. And this is the kind of Sam Raimi movie that I love to see. So it's <clears throat> essentially, if you like Evil Dead, if you like Evil Dead 2 or Army of Darkness, this is, I could almost live in that. I mean, it is. It's in the Sam Raimi world. So this is much more Sam Raimi than the other Sam Raimi uh, things that we've seen recently. And how much of the uh, of the gross out stuff and the and the freakish stuff comes with a wink? Like that, it's the, all with that a signature wink. Sam Raimi wink. So I was talking to Ryan Reginald earlier uh, just today, and I was I, I said if I would like to go back and watch this again and, and count the number of jump scares, which there are there a are number many. of, yes, there are a few. and the number of laugh out loud moments, which there are a yeah, number of, and I, I think they're it. pretty much on par. Like you're laughing as much as you're like kind of mm-hmm. like oh that jolted me a little bit, and it's just fun. Like it never takes itself too seriously. There's some real gross stuff in here if you're into that kind of thing. I beat you, you old bitch. <laughs> Some good stuff, right? Some really good stuff. Some good twists, even though you kind of see them coming. But uh, yeah, there's nothing tricky about this movie. Yeah, it's it's essentially an old gypsy woman. This feels a lot very Stephen Kingy at mm-hmm. times, right? Uh, this is an old. Yeah, she's she's a she's a woman, and uh, she wants uh, to get a um, a little more time to pay her mortgage. And Lindsay Lohan, she's behind on her. Mortgage. Lindsay Lohan, uh, <laughs> Christ, Lindsay Lohan. <laughs> Keep in mind, this comes out in 2009. Yeah, yeah, 2009. Mm-hmm. So yeah, right around there, so it's very timely. Uh, what, what's her name? Uh, uh, Lohan. Uh, 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 Allison Lohan. Allison Lohan, yes. So she disappeared. Uh, she, she retired. She's trying to, uh, you know, uh, make her way in the bank. The bank's way is to say, fuck you, lady, pay me. So she kind of says that, hoping to, like, you know, get a get a, a new position out of it for her boss. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, long story short, a, a hex is put on her. There's so much about this movie that should not have worked. And yeah. the fact that it was tongue-in-cheek, while also being scary, made it kind of special. Justin Long's her like fiance or boyfriend, and the key, uh, you know, he's a straight man, and he's listening to her all, all of her, her her craziness as she's being haunted by this thing, and, and she's convinced that all this stuff's happening, but. She's been attacked by uh, what, what we believe the audience to believe the ghost of Mrs. Gendish, but uh, uh, Justin Long's. No. Was, oh, she ghost. hadn't died no. yet. No, it's not even a but, ghost. But yeah. he was trying to convince. He's trying to gaslight. A hex has been put on her, right, and like a to, demon is right. coming Justin after Long's her. Right? A well-known gas- demon that mm-hmm. she she talks to like people of the occult who know about this demon and show her in the book like it's this thing I've seen it before. It opens up with like a real oh. whole fuck moment. Poor, the, poor Juan. With with Juan not uh, doing so hot. Are you he, Are you me? He stole. He stole a, an old gypsy woman's. Uh, I don't even know if you could do that anymore because I think gypsy is considered a pejorative now. You can't call people gypsies. No, gyp- I think gypsy is okay. You can't say gypped. I thought gypsy would have been out. I think oh, really? gypsy's out. No? Yeah. yeah. Do they? Because they, they say gypsy. It's peaky it opens up with like, uh, yeah, he stole a necklace from a gypsy woman, and the lady's like, "Oh shit, no, he shouldn't have done that." I think at some point the gypsy is uttered. And then the, the earth opens up and swallows yes. poor little Juan. He's dragged to hell. <laughs> He's dragged <laughs> he is in fact dragged to hell. So what's interesting about this movie, as far as marketing goes and the PG-13 of it all, which you... 
I'm not talking about the marketing. I'm not saying the advertisements. I'm saying people who've seen the film and now post, hey, remember that 2009 film? Was the When's the last time you saw I a just, Twitter post I of just, somebody saying, hey, remember that 2009 uh, movie? You know, I got to say, the scariest PG-13 movie. It really I've was a week. It really period. was a, like a week. You're describing <laughs> movies on Reddit. <laughs> the movie That's subreddit right. is precisely oh, really? that. I don't know. You would hate it. You would throw your computer out the window. <laughs> It's the most basic takes that have I was, like thousands of likes. <laughs> yes. Talking to Ryan about <laughs> Did it. Did you know the Matrix no. still holds up? Very philosophical. <laughs> kill me. Yeah. Fucking kill me. <laughs> One Fox Neo is both Mr. <laughs> Anderson and Neo. Ryan Regenball and I were discussing this earlier today. And this is actually very, very smart. I, I and I would have to I would I would guess that Raimi agreed to it, or maybe there was some infighting, but I doubt it. I think that he probably saw the the genius marketing behind it, which is this: you release it as a PG thirteen movie, you get more asses in the seats, and then when it comes out on video on demand, you can release this R rated version essentially, but call it the unrated version, which is going to get even more mysterious. Sure. You're going to get even more people watching it for a second time, but this time with a little extra CGI, mm. and it's almost to the point where they could just like take off a layer of CGI because a lot of it is mm. CGI. Did you see eyeballs fly out of a head at all in your version? I think I did actually. So yeah, yeah, I did. The runtime is the exact same. It's just a matter of like there's an extra layer of CGI with a little extra gross out. There's probably a little more fluids. Interesting. And I'm I'm surprised that we don't see more of that today with this being 2009, 14 years ago. This seems like a real smart cash grab mm -hmm. to release a slightly, but it, it's almost like you just have to de-render things or just like go back to an earlier version right. before you yeah. put that extra stink on it with yeah, the yeah. CGI, right? Take out some blood. But my version that I saw had very little blood. The most blood there was in there was from a nosebleed. Yeah, that was a lot of blood. Uh, there was a lot of blood with that. Mm. Yeah. It was very funny, too, right? <laughs> you, got a, you got a little something here and there. Cause, did it get in my mouth? Did it get in, every time there's something really gross, it's always followed. You're taken care of yeah. with the humor aspect of it. It's just Sam Raimi fucking hitting on all cylinders. It I really, really, really like this movie. It is the peak of his powers. Of is he involved in the... Uh, because I'm sure you saw the trailer, the new He's the Evil Dead Rise. Producer, yeah. Rising. Exec executive producer of that. And that seems like it's done in the same vein. <laughs> seems like that could be fun. It could be fun, yeah. If it's, it's Sam Raimi, if it's got the same Raimi, uh, Sam Raimi tone to it, it's going to be fun. I think my two biggest laughs were the, the, the <laughs> Allison Lohman engages in a fist fight with uh, Mrs. Gandish. <laughs> uh, it's quite the age discrepancy, and mm -hmm. that was quite, quite amusing. And I'll just That's say, early on. I'll just say much later in the movie, there's a seance. That it was a goat. The goat was pretty sweet. Yeah, the goat was pretty sweet. <laughs> yeah. was pretty sweet. Did, Have you seen Evil by Dead Adam Sandler? No, I don't think so. Oh. Have you seen Evil Dead too? No. Should you seen out? Army of Darkness? Check it out. No. Yeah, you should probably get the fuck oh. out. You should probably leave right, right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's very upsetting. And obviously, you haven't seen Evil Dead. No, with the, uh, the, no. the trees. You've digging. seen the first one? I've not. He's he's the worst, and he should leave. I mean, right? at least not see the first one. Well, because he just doesn't bother to I see. Like, it. I don't really love movies. You don't. I know. Bry, bry. You I hear saw, that, everyone? I no, saw, no I saw John Wick too. No one on, on Twitter said it was good. I saw John Wick. Hey, that's right. I, I haven't seen anyone tell me that it's a great <laughs> PG-13 horror film. I haven't. All right, what else you got there, Brian? I feel like Regin Ball also got his claws into you. You can save this one till next week. Oh, can I? No, he, no, he paid. We're going to do another one next week. Mm, all right. Okay. I'm very excited. I just don't want to have to rush through this because... I'm not rushing for anything. All right. Well, get... I mean, we, okay. All righty. Get to it, Brian. Brian. Uh, Ryan Rendball also assigned, actually, actually assigned me a film uh, that yeah, the was way, not. Can I cut you off real quick? The what way that it went is like he said, I really want Brian and you to talk about the sor uh, about Sorcerer. I know you've already seen it, Anderson, so you watch Drag Me to Hell. Brian should watch Sorcerer. So I told Brian. Uh, that I watched. Was, we had two separate assignments, and he watched both. Brian, watched to both. Brian's credit. Well, before attempting mm -hmm. to. After just a veto, <laughs> just, just watch veto Drag right. Me to Hell. Which Ryan, by the way, very sweet guy that he is. Uh, he said, "Yeah, that's fine." He's like, "That was just a kind of a throw-in pick so that you watch Sorcerer, but that's fine." If Ryan wants to watch Drag Me to Hell well, instead, I Ryan, was, I respect I the process. I didn't relay that message to Brian. <laughs> I, res I respect the process. I don't like Anderson not communicating that to me, but I watched both films. The one that I was assigned, Sorcerer, a 1977 film directed and written by William Friedkin. Uh, uh, starring Roy Scheider, Bruno Cremer, uh, Francisco Raval, and Amadou. He's just known as Amadou. Amadou. 80% of Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, you can rent this, which I did, uh, for the odd price of like two eighty four. I don't know, it was weird. Maybe you got a credit. What's that? They have like 10% off days. Or okay, well maybe that's what happened. Um, 
the story behind this movie is interesting. Uh, there's a lot of crossover with like a Fitzcarraldo, which is uh, Friedkin angered a lot of people on the set. I was mm-hmm. reading about the background of this film. Uh, angered a lot of his actors, was uh, uh, angering a lot of his crew uh, at some of his demands. Uh, the uh, conditions in which they filmed were apparently not very hospitable. Mm. Uh, and on top of that... They're in the jungle. On top of that, he might have been a little difficult to work with at this point. He Perfection. saw this film as one of, like one of his op- like an opus. Mm-hmm. This is going to be it my, was. my signature film, and it's since been sort of it was criticized and not get good reviews at the time. Has since been uh, rediscovered and mm-hmm. ran hailed as as a forgotten classic. So I was uh, very. Uh, excited to see. I think the thing that hurt this film more than anything else was the title, because the title just is That's not what I was going to ask. Why? Because Why that's is the it name called... of one of the uh, vehicles that they use to transport yeah. this sweating dynamite. Be- that's, it, not it, a, like, that's not a good enough thing. Yeah. Not great. It, it, they, it, now, it's based on the source material, same source material as uh, Wages of Fear. Sorcerer material as Wages of Fear, which is a French film from the 50s, which, in talking to Ryan about both films uh, earlier today, that one went Wages more... of Fear is a great title. Yeah. It is, it is a good title. Yeah. Anyway, sorry, you're talking to Ryan. Yeah, and, uh, I forget what I'm off course. All right, oh, any, come any, on. Uh, that one was more. Uh, th- the themes differ, but the storyline was the same, okay. which is you know the transporting of uh, very volatile cargo. Okay. Right. So, so it all, the movie starts off with four vignettes. We get to know our four main characters uh, in their previous lives. Uh, it's showing them up to no good in various stages of criminality. And then we fast forward to uh, Colombia, right? They're in South America. They did, it's an unnamed country oh, okay. in like Central America or like the top of South America. Okay. It might just be South America. They don't distinguish exactly where it is. It's okay. just essentially like a third world country where all these men are hiding. Yeah, out, so all, all, they've, all si- they've all sought refuge in this uh, small, remote uh, jungle town. And uh, wouldn't you know it, there's an oil company, American oil company, that's drilling and uh, things go wrong. Them, there's a giant fire, and the only way to put out the fire is with dynamite. However, the dynamite they have is so old and so uh, weather beaten mm-hmm. that it's sweating. It's sweating nitroglycerin. Very volatile. And ex- extremely volatile. As we learn quite right? early. This was a plot line in Lost at one point. And so they. Uh, was it? Yeah. Hmm. Remember Ernst? Ernst got blown up by the dynamite? Yeah, I do remember that. That was shocking. I it forgot shocking. all about that. You're right. And then, uh, so the, the the local the local guy, I guess, who's hired to uh, uh, coordinate the transportation over uh, over uh, 280 miles, they say. Dirt roads, potholes, R- bridges. Rivers, yeah, roads that are out. <laughs> and you can't go over bumps or anything or else this shit might all go up. It's crazy. Uh, and so he hires yeah. these four uh, local mercenaries who are clearly uh, outsiders, interlopers, and they uh, they hire him to take two different vehicles, two giant work trucks, I guess you would call them. One uh, guy's like a Nazi criminal, right? He's, he's like he's a Nazi refugee. Yeah. yeah. Mm. They all come from varying backgrounds. <laughs> but they all have nothing to live for. They're all desperate. That's right. They're, they're all criminals all, on the lam. They're all willing to do, mm. like, they're all the right men for this very, very <laughs> hazardous job that they're tasked with, which is transporting right. for, a, for a hefty fee yeah yeah a hefty fee if you're successful it's part suicide mission part mm-hmm. like you know if you make it you're gonna be you know on the set. Money. Yeah. yeah so it's a great setup now how is it executed that's the real story mm-hmm. here is how that setup was fucking great i was like it's the most white knuckle movie i think i may have ever seen really are you I mean, no, no, for sure, there are some white knuckle elements. It, it, it comes and it goes, but once it gets going, no pun intended, once they're on the road, I don't, I don't say road, they're just, they're just, once they're off, once there, they're trying some, to transport the white, stuff, there's some white knuckle Real uh, white shit knuckle. to be sure. Yeah. And then also, it's just, relentless. It is, it's relentless. And then also, just watching it as a production with. It's the bridge that comes to mind immediately. Of course, the bridge is a showpiece. As like, holy shit. Like, they were actually doing that. Yeah. William Freakin is a fucking maniac. What are you doing? Like, so they traverse a raging river in the rain in a, in, in a full-on hurricane uh, over a uh, a rope bridge. Over a rope a, bridge, a, yeah. A, a suspension rope bridge. Yeah, a ladder. Excuse me, a wood and rope bridge. Yeah, with the trucks. Yeah, it's crazy. And you can see the actual actors out there. And these aren't even. Ryan was telling me just today, these aren't even the actors that he, yeah, I guess he was quite open in interviews. Like, I didn't really want these guys. I guess they did a serviceable job, but I wanted, like, Shaw in my movie. He, he had a whole list of his dream team that he wanted to cast in this he movie. He didn't get any of them. And he didn't just get too them. crazy? They just wouldn't I do it? I guess they're like, I don't want to work in those conditions. But, so, but Fuck, he, Shaw would have been great. Shaw's always great. But the whole, it, it, all, it all works. I just, 
the, the uh, the, at one point, a fallen tree, a felled tree uh, is blocking the road. Obviously, the, you know, it, the word doesn't get back very quickly no. in the jungles of Colombia or wherever they are. And uh, they must use some of the dynamite to yes. blow up said tree. Mm. And the way they do it is just magnificent. Ingenious. Do you love this movie? I liked it a lot. Yeah. yeah. It was a real thrill ride. Can't help but notice you're, you're shying away from love. Yeah, I, I, I give us four stars. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. That's a really good review. Hmm. What do you like more? Oh, no. What? Why do I do this? Why do I ask myself? My, my goes to questions like this. Well, let me ask you. I know where you're going with this. Well, well, if you only could watch one. Oh, I'm such an asshole. John Wick. No! <laughs> Get out! <laughs> if I could only watch one. Are you serious? One. No. What? Are you serious? What's the question? Well, you know the question. You know the question. Of course, you both know the question. No, if, if for the rest of my life? No, just like, like tomorrow. Like you, go, you can watch one again in the afternoon. You know, you got a couple hours or three hours in this case with the old John Wick. you for the first time? John or? Wick for... No, you've seen them both. You, you're going to sit down, you're going to watch John Wick 4 again, and you're going to watch the old uh, Sorcerer. Oh, I haven't seen Sorcerer yet. Oh, you haven't seen no. it? Well, no, I'm no, not no. asking the wrong person. You're asking the wrong person. I need to right? see it. I almost watched it, but it would have been at like 10 p.m. during a weeknight. You would have like, stayed This will just away. wire me. I can't, yeah, I can't watch have wired. That's Under sure. those can't parameters, John Wick 4. What are those parameters? <laughs> I've, I've seen both films, and tomorrow I'm watching one of them again. I really, li- I really like Sorcerer. All right. But Sean Wick was sweet. Listen, I'm going to have to push <laughs> this one. I'm going to have to push this. Uh, a Single Man, which was uh, a, a, a dark spot for me. Uh, it is a John Ford film. Is that? Oh. Tom Ford, I should say. Oh, I was going to say. Jesus that because it's about John Ford, Clive. Tom Ford. Uh, oh, no. It's about, um, what's this fuck? You're going to find out all for about the that stuff. Colin Firth. Yeah, Colin Firth. Uh, it's a Colin Firth movie. A uh, lot of style, a lot to talk about, a lot to like in that movie, A Single Man. Uh, 2009's A Single Man. Mm-hmm. It's Tom Ford's first movie. He followed up with Nocturnal Animals a few years later, uh, which I absolutely loved. So it's embarrassing that I have not seen A Single Man. Uh, Mr. Jeffrey Covey uh, made me watch this. He was hounding me. I finally watched it for you, sir. I promised I'd be talking about it on this episode. Pushing it to next week. I apologize. I know he threatens me for not having uh, talked about or wow. watched this movie yet. So I'm sorry. So very serious. I'm sorry, Jeffrey. Let me ask you a question. Uh, I will be talking watch, about it next week. If you week. had to watch A Single Man or John Wick 4 tomorrow. A Single Man. Okay. Absolutely. Uh, John Wick 4 made much, me so tired. How much gunplay is in A Single Man? Uh, there's a little gunplay. Okay. A man is sleeping with a gun at one point. Okay. There's a a, a, a a comical uh, attempted suicide scene, which mm-hmm. I you didn't see coming. This is a very, very uh, well put together movie uh, with some very, very big holes, which I'll okay. talk about next week. I can't demand everyone like we did with Baby Teeth a few weeks ago. Like, you should watch Baby Teeth. I'll be talking about it next week. But uh, there's a lot to like with a, a single man. All right. All right. Yeah. That's uh, that's that. Let's uh, let's, uh, let's let's roll. Yeah, let's. later in the week, if you're listening in two parts or immediately after this. What didn't you see. like about uh, Sorcerer? I mean, what was the problem? I gave you four huh. stars. Why'd you take a star away? What, what was the problem? Nitpick it. I can't think of anything I really didn't oh, like. Interesting. Huh. Interesting. Were you bored? What's that? Were you bored? Maybe so. in the early parts of the movie. Because you're like, simple. I, simple <laughs> what about? Like, were there like? <laughs> Poor performances. No. Maybe you didn't like some of the shots. Four stars out of five is a very good review. Mm-hmm. I like the movie quite a bit. I just like John Wick 4. So John Wick 4 is like a four and a half for you? No, they're both four stars. But if you're asking me to choose, I got I to gotta choose. You never were bored during John Wick 4. Never once. Watching actually. him fight one person after another. Tor- oh, same. fuck no. Towards the end of the movie. Not even fight, just shoot. Towards them. the end. Of- I'm so confused. There's a lot of fighting. Towards the end of the movie, I was aware like, oh, wow. We're getting close to the end, but like I lost track of time because I was so engrossed. Really? Yeah. God damn it! I'm jealous. I'm really yeah. jealous. I yeah. I felt it was I, true energy. I, I found myself thinking, oh, it's gonna wrap up soon, and then there was an entire other segment. They went, but first, this must happen. I went, fuck yeah! <laughs> we get forty more minutes. <laughs> There's more. Guys, this is like I can't appreciate sugar, and it's not. I'm not suggesting in any way because I know I'm a dumb fuck. I understand that. I, I I I'm I'm a simple person in many many ways. One of the main reasons why I love movies is because I can't read and I like stories. I mean, that's... But what the... F- I, I, I don't understand. I don't get it. I want to. Yeah. Help well, me understand. Maybe John Wick Chapter 5 is turning around. You ever meet like an asexual and it's just like it doesn't make sense to you? Like that they don't understand? It's like, how yeah. do you not like... Like that's what I feel like that's, with that's this. What, that's what I'm feeling right now. Boobs are cool. Boobs? I want to... Oh, that's a whole other thing though. No, I do have a problem with <laughs> See? That's for the after that. I don't quite understand. 
<laughs> the boobs. I don't understand. I guess I just don't understand manly stuff. Like guns and big boobs are confusing. To and sports, yeah. <laughs> hey, I love my hockey. Oh, sure. It's not a real sport, though. It's, it's an absolute com- real sport. Communist Brian, sport. Brian, tell me, it's it's such a real sport that it's the only sport that has blood in the rule book. It's a good point. You get two two, two minute penalty if you uh, if there's no blood. If you drew blood on that man, you get sit in the box for four minutes. All right, you turn me around. Pretty see, sweet. You know that was all right. Thanks again, Ryan Reginball. That was cool uh, seeing Sorcerer and Drag Me to Hell. Reginball, a little bonus for Canadian. Me. Thanks, Sons of August. Uh, check them out over at AndersonandBrian.com. They are featured artists this week. Anderson and Brian.com is the website where there's a uh, link to our Amazon, which you guys are using and we appreciate. Uh, Anderson and Brian is the Instagram. Anderson and Brian is the TikTok. Before that gets banned, the Film Vaults on Facebook, Twitter, and the Film Vault <laughs> Podcast on YouTube. Thank you, all of our Patreon listeners. And also thanks to Giovanni, Mitch Burns, Mike Cole, and Eric Kath. You guys are doing a great job. We appreciate you a lot. Uh, Addie's Antiques continues to uh, fill my feed on Facebook. I Sweet. Get, I get push notifications. No, I don't know who you do. So Andy, uh, Addie's Antiques. She posts a lot of stuff. She's got an entire store of mid-century mm-hmm. modern, really cool stuff. Me- m- much of that stuff I've, I've, I've pulled myself, personally. So much fun. Treasure on tap. I fucking love doing that with the wife and the kid. Daddy, I don't want to go treasure hunting. You're going! Get your ass off the couch. Or else I'll make you watch Sorcerer. Again. 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 That was going to be my, my tag. Nice. Okay. All right, guys. Thanks for listening. Thanks for downloading. Check out the top five. It says three vaulties here, but I assume we're doing birth scenes. Uh, yeah. Fire, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, annual yeah. review. That'll Until come then. We do it for Van Gogh. And I must conclude it's behind.